here. You just live here. Really, nigga? Okay. DJ, so, what about that man that Peso showed that Prism sent to him? That pod? Yeah. yeah, um, Adigan, whatever his name is. Yeah. Yes, I know. that man. So I was just tagged in a video of a Christian black man talking about how to deal with black women. This will not be easy to hear. Earlier to someone else, but I do want to stress this. There's nothing you can do outside of the black women we have right now that will make any significant change in our society. Once we see the root of evil, which is the black woman, we have to cut her out. You can't chastise her. You can't punish her. Really, nigga? You can't discuss anything with her because she's made it blatantly clear that she does not care about you or your well-being or what's best for you. She does not care about the rightness or the wrongness of anything. She just wants to win. Really, nigga? She just wants what she wants. If the system isn't going to change, and it's not, if the female isn't going to change, and she's not, who needs to change? Us. We do. We've tried everything. The only thing we haven't tried is violence. And we know that will actually succeed. Historically speaking, it's always been the case. When you read the Bible, what does it tell you to do? That's how you rid the world of evil. That's how you control a population to the point where much of the evil within that population won't be passed down to the next generation. 40%. I need you to go look at the statistics. 140, almost 140,000 girls are missing. Wow. And to um, add on to that, it's mostly black men that are selling these girls into sex trafficking and kidnapping. So doing what they've always done exactly yeah so when you say black girls are not protected that's that's it right there because 40 percent yep like that's black men are really not protecting their families and then you guys want to come off when we ask for help you guys want to say oh uh you guys are independent you guys didn't want our help that's not the point. Your nieces and nephews are being kidnapped. Somebody in your family is being kidnapped and you're not doing a thing about it. So this is why we don't trust you guys in the community because of things happening like this. There is no protection in our community. So none when, at all. So when are we going to stop having the conversation about needing protection? When, 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 I, I just, I, I need you, I need you to hear my heart about this. 2020, Kevin Samuels started his reign of hatred by using a beautiful black woman who was accomplished and he has no idea where she came from or what she had to go through. And she was raised by a father and a mother who loved her. He used that young woman to come up off, off her pain so that he could profit off of it. When, when are we going to stop? And I'm not saying all black men are not there. There are black men that are, that are protecting their households. But why are we having a conversation based on what they are saying about we, that white men protect their women. This man protects their women. How would they know that? Do you know how many little white girls have been missing out of homes? Where's their protection? Are we really that blind to think that everything is just, are we only looking at this from the black lens? There are little, yeah. there are little Asian girls missing too, y'all. We can't, we can't live our lives. And I understand that we want to take care of ourselves and by and large, that comment that Scott Adams made about he's leaving the black community alone and everybody was a little incensed about it, but they're not incensed about Miss Pearly things. Mm -hmm. 
I need you to kind of bring yourself, gather yourself together as a woman and stop looking for protection other than the people, the men and women who have badges and guns to do it. Exactly. You need exactly. to arm yourselves. You need to get your CCWs. If you don't have your CCWs, they have shock sticks. They have cases that will go around your cell phone that if you activate it and somebody is attacking you, you can hit them in the center of their chest, their head, or wherever to shock them. You have shock rings that you can wear. You need to protect yourself. The same way black men, if they get in trouble, they're going to hit 911. This is why it's it was so detrimental during that uh during the protests and everything and it it, it set us back more than it, anything. And it didn't do what they thought it was going to do. As a matter of fact, anybody any police department that was defunded not only got their payback, but many of them got raises. And I don't understand how a demographic of women who are in the worst position in the United States can call for the uh, destabilization of the police force when that's all you really have between you and danger. Well, I mean, it's purposeful. Like, I mean, let, let me say this. Um, I think Torch is gonna play a video that I, um, I thought was really interesting that happened the other night. And I'm telling you, there are people, I call myself a divergent thinker. I'm, I'm not quite divestment, but I have divested from a bunch of crap, okay? Um, I don't hate black men because I'm always on a Mary show, but I, I refuse to allow myself to be a victim to people who wanna make me a victim based on my skin color. I'm not going to allow that. And I'm not going to allow other black women to become victims of men who talk too much, who have absolutely no filters over the harm that they're bringing to women who have nothing to do with this space. I can't tell you the number of my friends who don't know anything about this space mm -hmm. and they're not even invested in it. And when I played them that tape, I have, the, I have it. I have it saved on my phone for a reason. I've done the same. I've shared it with people who have no idea what's going on, including black men that have no idea what's going on. And those people are innocent. We're talking about black grandmothers who don't live in those communities. Mm -hmm. They don't live in those smaller urban areas. Like, what are we talking about here? Like you guys are putting people in danger. You're putting little kids in danger of some incel who's just about had enough because I haven't had sex in about three months now and nobody wants me and I don't want no black woman because she don't want me no more. They don't want to be bothered with you. Like you don't have the right to think that you should have access to women who are in there. I, like, like I'm not in my fifties, but I know women who are in their fifties who have daughters who are like 18 and 17. Like, how dare you? Think that you should have access. I have that same man who called for the lives of those young women. I have a video that I'm gonna send to Pesos and I'm not sure if I haven't sent it to him where he said black men cannot molest little girls but black women can, can, can molest boys. That from the point that girls are 11 years old, they should be blanked and, and impregnated. Yeah, because if you look at um, the certificates, it's more the men in the family that are molesting the children, whether it's boys or girls, than the women. Is yeah, that a higher rate? They but like they to run. They like to run with the narrative that it it doesn't happen in the black community because of the FBI stats. But what what they fail to acknowledge is that it's not reported. It's been underreported because of history, because of the history of the black black so called black community. And it, it's just been forwarded throughout history of this idea of you don't tell because black men were being killed before for that very thing, they were being hung. So it, it went on from generation to generation of not reporting. It's happening just as much in the black community. And thank God it's being reported more, but also it's still being silenced. Yeah, I I, I think that we, we have a problem and 
um, I'm interested, you know, you know, I've, I've been listening to these guys try to spin this information um, coming out about Freaknik. And one guy was like, you know, we know, we know Dennis Sperling's a big mouth anyway. You know, I'm going to handle Dennis Sperling in only the way that I can. And, and the more he opens his mouth, the more evidence he's giving me. I, I've, I've already made myself. Then they need to know I am your enemy. All of these passport bros, the manosphere, you need to know I'm your enemy. I'm the one setting the fires all around you. You call yourself the Blizzard King. I'm about to light fire to everything that you gentlemen are doing online to black women to cause harm to the people who have nothing to do with this space. Did you also hear the um, video on Spotify that this I, guy I, is? I know I, I'm the one that located all the information. I know exactly where he is. Oh, okay. He's more than, he's everywhere. He's a danger. When I tell you that those videos have went everywhere, they're everywhere now. There's not, there's not one agency that's not involved in what's going on in this space. These guys think that they're on here every night and they're speaking from their First Amendment rights. They have no idea what's going on. And I'm telling you, it's going to get really ugly. It's about to get very ugly. Because come Monday, I have a new fire that I'm getting ready to start. I never do anything without purpose. I'm a very purposeful, intentful woman. Are you, um, I gotta ask you a question. Are you the same woman that uh, went to your local Congress to pass a bill um, that will protect black women? I'm, a, I'm one of the advocates for that bill, I am. Oh, okay, yeah. But I just I, wanna make sure I'm talking to the same person. Yep, and I think black women, I think, you know, this whole thing about not trusting your police, there are African-American women that are on the forces everywhere in America. There are black women who are chief of police and everything all over America that you can trust. That And I'm gonna be honest with you. There are some Latinas and women of Hispanic descent and Asian women who are absolutely able and capable and effective in law enforcement. That are oh, US I'm sorry to um, cut you off, but Monica said, do you have a cash app? How can we support you? find you so let me say this i'm honestly financially i don't need the support but because of who dj torch is i would really love it if you guys would support gemini and some of these other ladies on the panel because one of the thing is one thing about me is this i'm not looking for anybody to do anything for me other than i want women to understand that youtube has a acceptable use of policy and these men have been breaking these policies for 10 years and you're not taking the force that you need to take with this i can give you the keys of how you can do this kevin samuel should not have 1 million subscribers right neither should pearl pearl should not have the well hope not hope not hate in the united kingdom is the same uh, organization of women and men who destroyed Andrew Tate and he had to leave the, the UK. They are on to Pearl now. I wanna they, are the ones who, they are the ones who had him deplatformed. So I'm letting you know that you have the ability and the, 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 the knowledge, the most educated demographic of women, you all have the ability to take your pen and paper, pick up your phone, Contact your congressmen, your senators, and everybody you can contact, your local police officers, your districts. Contact them. Let them know what's going on in these spaces. Send them videos. Let them hear the rhetoric for themselves. Let these police officers know what's going on so that their team of internet investigators can become aware, connect with the FBI, let them know the information that they've discovered and let them come together and make sure that it happens. We need to destroy this space. 
When I say we need to destroy the space, I mean we need to create a YouTube apocalypse that one day these men wake up and they are completely banned and never be able to come back to this space again. We need to utilize our forces as black women. We are the largest demographic in the black race. It is our job to protect us and our girls. Because I have a working theory that a lot of these girls that have been missing since 2020, they might not be street walkers, but I guarantee you they are sourcing through some of these religious extremist groups that are in America and are being made slaves to those men. That mindset is not far from Africa, from Boko Haram, where those men went into that school and took those 247 little girls. We cannot continue to act like the black community is above reproach. We need to accept who we really came from and we need to develop a plan as responsible and respectable black Americans to stop this because it's going to affect us all if this continues with this stuff that's going on overseas. Because now we have little girls who are 13 and 14 years old being impregnated by these guys. You know, I, 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 let me let me uh, welcome Peso to the stage. Hey, Peso man. Hey, Pesos. I hope he's not trolling. I was not a troll. I don't know. No, it's a, it's him. He may. Are you there, Peso? Yeah. What's up? Hey. Hey, Peso. Peso. I was getting some hot chocolate, so um, I, I do apologize. Do apologize. Oh um, no! Um, what you have to say? Right. Yeah, I just want to say I want to say a couple of things. Okay, I got stuck on there. Oh, you're breaking up. You're struggling, you. but you're, you're struggling, but we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, is the sky guy there, guy there? Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, let me ask you a question. How did you, how did DJ torch torches um um platform? YouTube. YouTube uh, two. There's an echo. But YouTube threw his channel my way. Through whose channel? YouTube, his channel showed up in my suggested videos. Okay. 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 So are you pro ministry? ministry? I would say yes. Okay. okay. Have you ever I don't agree something? with everything. Uh, that's, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Um, uh, I don't. Uh, I don't expect that everything. Everything. Anybody. Let me ask you. Let me ask you this question. Have, have you ever heard of me? Could you repeat that? Have you ever heard? Ever heard of the peso man? Uh, only oh, on this channel. I don't. Oh, 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 really? Oh, 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 you've only heard. Only heard of the peso man on this channel. This channel. Yeah. You, you've never. Yeah. It, it, it never was the rhythm of anything, huh? No, no, it didn't show no, up. It didn't. Okay, 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 all right, all right. That's, that's all I want to know. All right, all right. All right. That's all. Thank, thank you, sir. Um, um. We want to thank uh, Chris thank for coming up and dropping those. Dropping. Okay, somebody has an echo. Probably, probably. Yeah. Can I? Can I? Can I? Um, I want to thank uh, Kevin for coming up. Please go on mute. Please put your mics on mute. I don't know who that is, but. Um. I wanted to thank Prism for coming up and uh, dropping those jewels and everybody else who um, broached the panel tonight. You were getting ready to say something? Yes. Um, she mentions 
the channels being taken down or them being deplatformed, but that does not solve the issue. The issue is still there. And taking them down may sort of martyr them. So it's like something has to, something else has to be done other than simply deplatforming them. Well, she mentioned a lot, and she she mentioned yeah. it solely in in aspects of there's a lot of things that are being done behind the scenes, which I'm sure she can't uh, disclose everything. But uh, e even taking them down is a lot because then you don't have those people exposing young people to the rhetoric. And sooner or later, other forms of legislation are going to follow. So the, what essentially what's going to happen is yes, this will create a domino effect. And it's also going to further take our right of speech away because this is called taking advantage of it when you have these extremist groups come together and spew this type of rhetoric, in particular indoctrinating it amongst the youth because this is hitting the, the school pipeline now. People are walking out, these teachers and administrators, they don't want to deal with it. Uh, with these boys coming talking about their red pill, I don't have to listen to you. You're a woman. I mean, that's a problem. You know, there's no respect for authority. So that means that the government essentially is going to have to come in and take over. But you have to look at the root cause. What's causing all of this? The root cause are the are the males and their leadership. Yeah, but there's what. What will cause a normal guy to all of a sudden become radicalized? What uh, I think it has to be looked at from that standpoint. Okay, let me let me address this in the chat, sir. We are not talking about illegal immigrants. We're here to talk about the subject of black men and what's going on amongst the black demographic. If you want to talk about immigrants and not and not reporting them to ICE, there's places that you can go that you can do that. Um, if there, it is not about giving any illegal pass. We have enough to worry about amongst the black demographic than to be worried about immigrants. So when you stop killing one another every two hours, then we can talk. Maybe perhaps we can talk about immigrants. We're not talking about immigrants here. Yeah, the basic problem, Scott, is that these men are are basically telling men lies, and that's that they are entitled to women, and that is the biggest myth. All men are not entitled to women. There are men who do not need to ever be in the presence of a woman. So, you know, telling them things like go make this amount of money. And then in the meantime, you're also pumping them up. You're making them feel angry. You're pointing out a supposed enemy, which is women, which transports uh, uh, to the children because we have the, these death rates rising amongst women and children. So you can't say that this isn't an issue. And then they turn around and come back and gaslight saying that this is entertainment. There is nothing entertainment entertaining about what's going on with this entire situation. There's nothing entertaining. About definitely not that entertaining. That yeah. It's definitely not entertaining, entertaining when you call for the deletion of black women and saying right. children. Exactly. You know, that, that video of that guy, you know, that's, that's, there's no entertainment associated with, uh, with that guy sitting here promoting uh, other men to take action against women and for what being the enemy for what so it just goes to show you it's dangerous and yes just like jim and i said earlier if you don't think that it trickles down in general when your family that you know the women in your family have to still walk amongst these streets they still have to go to the grocery stores and the last thing you need is one of these guys being coming out here and then harming them. So yes, this is a problem. But meanwhile, men are sitting around talking about, oh, well, this is entertainment. They're not really serious. Well, you know, I just only got to protect my family and look out for them. Well, looking out for your family means also in turn looking out for your community, which spreads out to the world. So you guys are already showing you don't have leadership if you're not even going to look out for your own immediate community which starts first in your own. You should be concerned about that kind of rhetoric being spewed when you have daughters, nieces, you know, young people in your family walking around. You should be very concerned. 
And I, and I find it appalling to hear grown people sit back and be so lax as if they aren't concerned when you're getting along in years. And the last thing you want to do is be out here dealing like that with this type of extremity as you're getting on in years. You should definitely be concerned. And I like that they figure that they're going to be somehow exempt from uh, whatever is flying around if, if rounds are flying around. Because their proximity to those rounds flying around at the women that they're with is going to likely hit them as well. I mean, you got a guy that you got that guy in Detroit who was just caught up for, you know, a 67 year old woman, then an 80 year old woman. And here he is amongst the neighborhood full of women. So that goes to show you all this protection. There is no protection. And he knew that. That's why he knew he could have his pick of the of the litter of what woman he was going to come into our house and violate. Because where are the protection of the men? There is no protection. So these are outdated talking points. And that's why I said it doesn't match up with the current stats that suggest that young people are not moving the way that they once did. So going back to those old values is not going to operate in the current conditions that we're in. It, it, it just doesn't match up. So it's making these conversations pointless. And it's also spewing lies to the youth because they themselves don't know any better because they haven't even had any life experience. And you're setting them up essentially for failure. Right. Donna, so, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, okay. On the subject of, of that protection, again, if a black man has never felt embraced by his community, why would he care? That's the, you know what, I'm not, sir? I'm not, I'm, I'm you know what, saying? Scott? Quite go frankly, ahead. right go now, ahead. I could give a crap less about how black men feel when women and children are in danger. Black men need to police themselves up, grab their balls, and man up. If you're not protected, it's your own fault. If if black men don't feel wanted, they don't feel cared for, it's their own fault. If they don't if they don't put themselves in a position to be wanted, if they don't put themselves in a position to uh, do what it takes to be the man that, that women want, it's their own fault. No woman owes any man anything just because they're breathing and because they have a set, set of balls in a bag. What about comments? And who, and who gave, for, hold on, who gave a uh, license? Where in history has a man been embraced other than maybe some type of celebratory honor? That's when you celebrate the man. But, but a doctor, He'll, he'll have to do perform several surgeries before he gets that one honorary, you know, uh, sh uh, shindig. And it's normally his retirement. So all of this praise and worship service that, that men are looking for, that's weak. You should already be strong. The strength should come in knowing that your community is protected and that everyone is essentially glowing in happiness because they know the community is protected because you are making sure that that is such. It's time out. Like black women, again, black women, black men will not thank you for coddling them. They will not thank you for building them up. They will not thank you for being there when they're nothing. Just remember that. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's an understandable theory. However, we're so far removed from that and we're able to confront these terms and conditions. So it's like when I hear these arguments, it's like, okay, well, what are you doing to be able to heal from past life traumas? You know, where is the the reading going back to school? You know, uh, you know, working on your mindset instead of just sitting around using these talking points as an excuse to continue the cycle. You know, we're we're you know the the problem was lack of education. It was lack of opportunity. So those people were forced and in bondage in that way. So it was beyond just being property. It was the fact that they weren't even allowed to partake in life itself. Now the, the chains have, have been broken in terms of us being able to make certain uh, choices and decisions. Women are in fact, particularly black women are more recently out of bondage than black men in a lot of ways just due to societal standards that had nothing to even do with, with us being black, but just being women. So it's like, it always comes off to me as a backhanded excuse on reserve. You know what I mean? I know what you, and see, that's why I came up with that concept of autonomous Negro syndrome, because it's like, um, I remember my aunt had adopted these dogs one day. And I'm not trying to compare us to dogs, but just go with me real quick. And one of the dogs' name was Ebony, and, and she would never leave her cage because she used to get beat all the time. So she would open up the cage doors 
and all the dogs would run out. And Ebony would stay in that in the corner of the cage. When she closed the cage door, she, she would wag her tail, walk around, be happy. When she opened it up, she would go into the corner and start shaking. And, and it's, it's almost like you don't have the slave under control when he's in chains. You got him under control when you take him off the chain. They used to all, I, I hear black people always say, especially black men, they'd be like, they watch the slave movie. They'd be like, man, that couldn't have been me back then because I wouldn't have stopped looking at them like, nigga, yes, you would have. It's easy to say that. But you ain't never seen a man get his spine pulled out right in front of you, a random person. You never got had your family telling you, you got to act like this to the point to where it just lasted. Because because white people never left. That's the issue. If we would have left slavery and been put in a place with no white people, and we could really heal ourselves, we'd have been cool. But they well, always actually, keep up actually, the no, I actually, actually, no. Let me disagree with you because by asking you, don't you think that this is actually actually worse that mental slavery is worse than actual physical bondage? Yes, that's what I'm saying. That's what, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Wait, wait a minute. Let me cut in for a second. That's not true because if you look at Haiti, look at Haiti. Haiti is a prime example. They were left to themselves, but look at it. Mm. No, no, you're right. The Haiti gets nothing though. They get no kind of support from anybody, especially from the UN. When when they got hit by that, I can't remember when it was. I think I was in high well, school. Well, they okay, but they were supposed to make their own way. That's what I'm saying. They were supposed to make right. their own way. They fought for freedom. They got freedom. And your premise earlier was if we were left to ourselves, we could have healed. Well, Haiti didn't. They were left to themselves and look at it. Yeah, but they didn't know who they were. But like, see, like, but but, but see, but this like, is a problem with were... Deontay. Deontay, this is a problem now because see, here's another thing, because we're talking about black women in particular. And there are a lot of black women right now who are going back to college getting their degrees. And I'm talking about these are senior women. These are women 55 plus. And these women clearly don't need a degree in terms of they're not getting ready to go back and hit the market of employment. But these women are going back because they've been mothers, grandmothers, they've taken care of everybody. And now they're spoiling themselves by going back, getting the education that was once denied to them at a time in which it was a struggle for a woman, let alone a black woman, to be able to make an education a, a factor in her life. So you got to want it for yourself. You got to get out of the mental bondage. But when these guys are sitting around saying that degrees don't mean nothing at a young age, then they're certainly not going to go back at an older age and get it. So it doesn't matter either way. You have got to get out of your own way in life. And that's something that that's been a lifetime lesson since the beginning of time. Somebody has always defied the standards. Someone has always stepped out on faith and been able to succeed no matter what type of time that we were in. And so where black women are right now is we want to persevere. We just saw these videos. These women are working out staying healthy. They're not talking about no man. They want to be strong. They want to travel. They want to hit the pavement. They want to smell the roses and enjoy life. And we can't sit here and keep talking about, you know, our ancestors really degrading them and, and minimizing who they were in their experience by feeling like we're even lesser than when they did all of this for us to get to this point. And I would think that they would want us to move on and, and make it happen. And now everybody walking around here dumb. Stuck on stupid. <laughs> stuck on <Yeah>. stupid. <laughs> because it, the older men are stuck on stupid and the older men are the ones that are telling the younger men. So he's likely been listening to older men and this is where he's getting his information from. Hence the beginning of the video where Yanni was talking about stop idolizing and, and having internalizing other people's experiences and making them your own and so you you go out and you meet other people based on a skewed sense of reality like go out and, and make your own reality go out and, and have your own experiences so you exactly. know how to how to um navigate through real life because these people are only selling you a portion of themselves and a lot of times the the portion that they're selling isn't even real it's not, it's not even what they experienced themselves. I mean, 
it's scary, actually. You know, it's, it's leading these people into a dangerous zone. Stuff is really hard to talk about and it's hard to um, just do lives and be focused on the hard things. But what mm -hmm. I want people to realize, and we may just have to do it and who shows up, who shows up, is that when black men are killing one another every two hours and they're killing black women every 4.6 hours, then they really have nothing to say about anything because they're the ones that are doing the most damage. They're leaving their children behind and black women are having to raise their children alone by themselves. So this, this whole conversation about uh, deviating to dating men who have nothing, who want nothing. They want women to con, con to, um, they want women to be complacent with them. They want women to stay in the same state with them. They want the foolery. They want all of this, all of this that they want on a four forty three k max salary for a lifetime. And it's not black women that have the problem. It's the black men that can't provide that have the problem. So there, and I'm not saying there aren't some delusional black women because there are, there's some mm -hmm. delusional black women. Um, but for the most part, black women have shown society as a whole that we're not the problem. Mm -hmm. And so these men have to get their act together and not for black women. And that's the problem. They feel like black women are asking them to get their act together for them. No, get your act together for yourself. True. Facts. You know, get, get yourself together for the children that you've created. Mm. Not That's for anybody what... else. And a lot of times people are so focused on getting themselves together for someone else, man and women, or getting themselves together so they can be in a relationship. Get yourself together for you. Get yourself mm -hmm. together so you can make the best of your own life. Because realistically, there, like Prism said, there isn't a person for everybody because women outnumber men. Mm -hmm. unless, unless you plan on going to a country where, and, and there's only a couple where women, where men outnumber women. So, mm -hmm. you know, get yourselves together for yourselves. Uh, this, this, it, there are so many things that are going on in society that need to be focused on that relationships is not one of them if you're not if you're not financially stable because there are things that are getting ready to happen that money is going to require money for you to be able to survive and live and and it's not going to take minimal money it's going to take more than minimal mm. Mm. and fiscal responsibility is required because nothing is guaranteed on black men that's not don't do it look it. i i laughed because the other night i sat there and i listened to that that fool uh i was i think it was on whose channel was it on it might have been on peso and he, the guy was going at dj and he was like can you say something nice he, he was messing with melinda can, can't you say something nice? i was like don't get that motherfucker nothing no he, she can't even say nothing about i'm like don't even do it that's what he's trying to I was like, don't go into those traps where they're trying to make you don't fight them on their territory. Right. No, I don't have to do anything. So I was proud of Melinda. She was like, I don't owe you anything. But still, you know, you, you know, you could see she was he was trying to trigger her and agitate her. And I was like, see, this is that uh, his points were so stupid, not based in any science, any facts, nothing. But it was that, you know, and I and I'll say to you all. Don't be, fuck, be as masculine as you need to be. Don't let them sit there. They use those trigger words. Oh, she masculine. And you guys want to get in the space to show that you're not. You don't have to prove nothing to these shit throwing monkeys. Rico, I never, I, I never, <laughs> fortunately for me, the first panel I went on, it was, it was only two guys. And then the woman was the host and she just like left me, <laughs> left me there with these two dudes to talk. But I figured it out then, and I, I I've never done that. I'm I'm just yeah. not going to justify my decisions to perfect strangers. Like you don't exist to me. You're or not even idiots. in my yeah. You're, you're not idiot. even in my reality. So right. there, there's no reason for me to sit here and argue with you, especially when you don't have the range for the conversation. Right. And it was crazy because, like I said, the two the two guys, one of them 
uh, was asking me if I would date someone who made half of my income. I was like, why would I do that? Like, why would I do that? And he was like, well, you can marry them and you can keep half of your income and savings. Oh, you would be a good lick. Like, I, yeah, I could marry you for five, have a five-year plan. Stay married you, me for but, five years. But, say, but and Gemini, you have you, a great retirement. Like, but do you see heck? what that question does? That mm -hmm. question is not to solicit an answer. That's a question just to get you to defend something. Right. So right. now well, you're- I mean, but he, he picked the wrong person because I have no problem defending that and on top of but, it- But here's the know. whole point. It's not that you have a problem defending it. That's the, that ain't, fuck his territory. <laughs> but no, but yeah, what I'm I would just simply is, say, Rico, I would simply no, 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 say, no. no. Wait, Rico, Rico, mm -hmm. what I'm saying is he didn't have the range for the conversation because when I said, oh, okay, so what about debt? Well, we're not going to talk about debt. So you're not fiscally responsible. So if you can't be fiscally responsible, there's nothing that we have. We, we don't have a conversation to be had. Right. Like it, it, there right. are men who can make less money and save more money than people who make more money than them. If I'm talking about that kind of person, that's kind of a different dynamic. Right. But when you're talking to people who don't have the range of, about um, finances, then it, it's a no-brainer. And these guys don't have the range to have the conversations that they want to enter into with women. And women <laughs> don't need to. I agree with you. Women don't. I won't. I'm not going on any panels with any men to discuss any of this because, quite frankly, you're not someone I would even take a second glance at or look at or have a conversation with. It's just, why would I? So well, why would I waste my energy and my efforts? I heard this woman say, she said, I see, why aren't you, why don't you speak to, this was at work, I was like, why don't you speak to such and such? She was like, mm -mm, I might need that last breath. She said, I might need that last breath um, on my di dying bed. And she said, <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so I feel like that. Yeah, why would I waste my breath? I might need that on my dying bed. Because why would I waste is. my keystrokes? Why do I waste my keystrokes and my energy on people who who, who don't matter when right. I can use those keystrokes to talk to women and warn women about things? These guys are not even <laughs> worth your energy, your time, your effort, or your breath. Right. The questions right. are this is the way I look at it. It's like you said, like that question you gave, which was a great question, it's just a baited question. This right. is a question where I'm going to lay it a trap to pull you in. And now mm -hmm. I got you conversing in this space of fucking stupidity. Yes, of the, I mean, literally, that's literally what they do. I watch them do it. I'm like, and, and all of a sudden the conversation is 20, 30 minutes, you know, just going around in this circle jerk, wasting time when there was a real serious, and you never get to, pro, uh, uh, you never get to proposition your question because right. you're stuck defending or explaining to a damn moron and idiot what which they're not going to accept nothing you say anyway you know you know when you walked in the room there's nothing i say to this asshole that he's right. going to accept as reality or even remotely true so why am i about to spend 30 minutes arguing with somebody who when he's asked the question he already has made up in his mind what the answer must be you don't Not even what engage. It must, it could be, but what it must engage. be. So unless I say the thing that he expect, and even if you give him the thing that he expect, he's going to ask you another baited question because there's a, mm -hmm. a chain of baited questions. So literally, like you can't say nothing good about women. No, okay. Well, why can't you? I was like, motherfucker, I answered the question. I'm not going to answer another and another. And I don't care how negative the answer sounds because you're never going to be satisfied. It's a yeah. bait. I had to I am hi. Oh, hi. I was just I was just coming because I agree with y'all on what y'all saying about getting on these panels. I sent DJ um a link. I don't know if you guys know the Saint in the Center and Princella the Queen Maker. They did a was supposed to be a debate on on what she thinks and and he insulted her the entire time, was given slick comments from the beginning and basically disrespected her. And she just left, calling her all types of names, calling her fat, talking about her hairline. It was it was a mess. So if y'all want to go watch that trash, y'all can. But just an example of how they and then what really is sickening is the men in the chat being like cooker. Cooker, oh you got her. Ooh, oh you got her. Ooh, ooh, oh yeah, Maya. We're gonna be doing a live on that one. That, yeah. That's not... 
Oh, can it be on a weekend? Because that's when your girl is off, and I <laughs> not not with the request. <laughs> no, because I want to be a part. I Maya, you I, becoming I, an old woman, Maya. <laughs> Maya, look at all the special requests. <laughs> old ass Maya. No, because I'm on at weekend. work. I'm at work, and I really want to be a part. That's all. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> We're just teasing you. We're just teasing you. Sound like my grandmama. <laughs> I get that make, a lot. Make like, it on a weekend, baby. No, I. I didn't yeah. think you sounded like a grandmother. I just thought it was funny you made that special No, no, quest. you're fine. I get, I have a young energy, but I got an old soul. <laughs> Pick it on the weekend, baby. Oh, I yeah. love it. I love it. My boss said that's why he hired me. He said, because you got an old soul, but you young in at heart. Mm. So, yeah. And even I go live on this app. I don't know if y'all heard of Bego. And there was these men trying to bait me. And I just said, I'm I respectfully, I'm not going to answer your question. Yeah. They right. want to know my age. They was like, where your kids at? I was like, I don't have any kids. Oh, how old are you? I was like, mm, you, you fine. You fine. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Don't even worry about it. Because you ain't the men for me. And you ain't the type of men I be around anyway. So right. I don't got to give you nothing. Right. And I just say this. I, I'll, I'll say this to every black woman. Please don't, please stop thinking y'all got to understand everybody. Just, just I, what I literally say yeah. is all I want to do is have the ability to recognize the fuckers for who they are. And once I see you, <laughs> I just need to identify you. And then I know, okay, put your ass over there. I'm, I don't care how you got broken. I don't know why. I don't care why. I don't understand. I didn't do it. It's not my job. I do not have any responsibility to figure out why you got so fucked up. But I just, but it is important for you guys for your safety, mental, physical, and emotional to be able to recognize these broken people, men and women, but especially men. But once you recognize who they are, stop thinking you have to figure them out. You don't, you just really don't. It's not your problem. You didn't do it. You didn't do it. Leave that fuck over there and keep moving. Well, you're <laughs> I want to read a couple of. Him. I want to read a couple of these comments, and then we're going to land the plane. But the con the conversation he started going on was talking about. The I'm sitting there listening to him, and I'm listening to what he's talking about. He's talking about helping other black men. That was the whole conversation, and Jim and I said something about that. I'm sitting here listening to us have proper dialogue about what's going on with this conversation continuously the if I, I did a whole little i did a do i did a, some little research today and no, i mean I, you made a, you, you're making a strong argument because i have but, I, I did notice that it went i mean the, the question i think you're saying let me see if i can articulate this is how did we go from home buying to homeless right right okay. so it's almost like what jim and i said it's almost like he's coming over here to kind of, you know, kind of remove the conversation, kind of a different direction so that we're talking about, well, these men over here are homeless. Well, I'm not going to let that man in my home. If those men are coming out of prison, it's for a reason. There are resources for those men, as far as the Department of Justice is concerned, that you have before you leave that um, facility. Number two, you have a guy like Jay, Jay Daniels, who's in the comment section right now, and he's part of that SBA, SBE culture, which I was talking to Amiri about earlier. And these men, if you go on their channels, Torch, I want you to hear this. I went to no more than 35 channels today, and I listened to every one of their entries, and every one of them had rap music degrading Black women. That SBE culture is the same culture that explicitly endorses that type of um that type of lifestyle they want to wonder why they get on these panels and they talk about with, with songs of violence and they want to understand they want to talk about why women are the way they are it's because you keep promoting that lifestyle so and as far as this guy is talking about us hyenas and stuff like that you know that's he, he might not understand this but we can't be hyenas because you don't even understand the nature of a hyena so if you want to get your passport, Jay Daniels, and take your hips over to another country where you have to go with a bunch of other men to take your little $5 of your pay to get a $2 hooker, then you go do that. But we're not checking for you who are leaving. 
We're not, a matter of fact, there's a whole lot of us not checking for you who are staying. What we're trying to do here is have a conversation to tear down the SBE culture, that foolishness that's going on in the manosphere because you guys are endangering the lives, not other of the women in America, but now you're starting to endanger the lives of women all around the world. So, so I got a question for you. Um, what would you call our side of Black YouTube, maybe our side, meaning uh, DJ Torch, uh, me, San Rico, you know, uh, all of us? What would you call like our side of, of uh, the male Black YouTube? I would call it Manosphere Accountability. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, because I, I, I just tripped off that. Like when ask, when people, a couple people ask me, like, uh, what would you call our side of things? I was, I couldn't, I didn't answer them. Like, oh, no, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, that's an interesting one. Yeah, I mean, I think that what they're doing is taking what they say, you know, Torch mm -hmm. and, and so many people, you're taking what they say and you're holding it up against the truth of what they do. One thing my father taught me about men particularly, even people, but men in particular, mm -hmm. listen to what they say, but right, the truth right. is in what they do. And I think that that's what Peso and DJ Torch and anybody who's supporting this whole side is saying what are you saying now what are you doing ah, I see the hypocrisy you. somewhere is in between yeah i run shit here you just live here yeah that's right you better walk away go on walk away because i'm gonna burn this motherfucker down king kong ain't got shit on me I'm winning. I'm winning any motherfucking way. I can't lose. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a day. <laughs> what a motherfucking day.